I could remember they came around February 2012. Since these people came without our knowledge, we wanted to find out who brought them here. We requested for their documents, which will give them permit for them to work. They could not produce anything. We said we would do a peaceful demonstration for them to know that they need to stop their job. It was there that fight broke out and they started shooting sporadically. <laughs> Well, I would say that uh, the rush by the Chinese uh, to the mining sector is something phenomenal. You know, it's, 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 it's just uh, something which nobody expected, even though the Chinese were coming trickling. But how they jumped into the mining sector is something that some of us uh, don't understand. Either they have some uh, leeway getting into it easily, or they are in league with some people who help them uh, to circumvent uh, some registration processes. Because how they get in and quickly are able to set up is something that even beats the imagination of some you know, government officials. And, and to, lo to look at people who don't have control and who cannot sometimes confront these people, who sometimes are, ma are, are, are armed. They were just, they are there, they just allow them to mine because they say that these are the documentation we have. If you look at the extent of damage caused to the land within this area alone, it's about 14 kilometers square. And all the lands were not being reclaimed. Cocoa used to be growing around all this place, all, the, all over, all over here. But now, look at the situation. You see a bare land. You see pits with water. And that's what is left to us. These pits with volumes of water, we don't know how we are going to handle this. Some school of thought believe that we can convert them into fish ponds for fish farming. But then, unless we do a lot of research to know whether the, the, the water has not been contaminated with chemicals, if it becomes possible, then we can convert it to maybe a useful venture. It makes me very angry, very, very angry as a Ghanaian to have um, foreigners who come in and flout our laws with impunity. For me, it's, it's, it's very annoying. And I also blame our government. I mean, if it, it, it shows the weaknesses in our, in our governance system as a whole. If we can have foreigners who, who didn't come as ghosts, they came as human beings who went through our ports of entry, either the airports or the seaports or by land through a flower and other places. They went through a port of entry where we had Ghanaian immigration officials who couldn't put a tap on them. To have Chinese, Spaniards and other foreigners coming into the country and then going into the rural communities, buying land at a rapid rate, developing gold mines there, doing bringing large you know, and, and big these big uh, machinery to come and clear large tracts of land and do mining in the full glare of local politicians in the full glare of local security agencies who are incapacitated and they do nothing that is where my the source of my anger is they come here to do this thing with gross impunity i think it is unacceptable if i have power in this country if I have power, authority in this country, and I see all those people actually destroy our water bodies, I'll just drive straight to the Air Force base, assemble some soldiers, give them large chunks of Indian hemp to enjoy themselves. After that, arm them, pack everybody in the helicopters and their military jets, fly over every water body. Anybody that you see destroying the water body instantly fire and kill the person. If we do that, once this is done, once or twice, nobody will destroy our water bodies again. I said this and people said, oh, the guy is a devil's incarnate. But I really enjoyed say, making that statement and I'll continue to make it.